Mr. Session Chairman, distinguished keynote speakers, distinguished scientists and researchers from different parts of India, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here at this wonderful workshop and I'm personally grateful to Dr. Gupta, Dr. Day and Dr. Kushari for inviting me to this wonderful workshop and uh, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts with all of you and uh, I have made an attempt to give you an overview in the sector of higher alcohols. You may be heard, hearing about that uh, we are talking about uh, ethanol, we are talking about uh, methanol for quite some time, but uh, I thought that uh, I should give you a flavor of what we are doing as far as higher alcohols are concerned. So in this context, I made this presentation and as I have already said, uh, it's an overview. Uh, to just to apprise you what is uh, being done in India. Now, once we uh, talk about, because this workshop also encompasses energy and environment, so I thought uh, I should also brief you about what is happening in energy and environment sector, particularly in India. Now, if you look at these statistics, now we have a population of 7.8 billion on Mother Earth as of now, and level of comfort is going up. Now, as you can see that uh, we had uh, per capita energy consumption around 1300 kilogram of oil equivalent in 1971 and it has gone up to uh, almost 2000 kilogram of oil equivalent in 2014. So it is almost 50 percent increase since uh, 1970 because you will agree with me that uh, all of us are now be accustomed to use energy either in one way or other way. We are uh, have actual of using air conditioners, we are having of using heaters. So uh, energy consumption is increasing multifold, that is quite sure. And unfortunately, uh, this energy is coming despite best effort by scientific fraternity from fossil fuel. Now, when we talk about fossil fuel, it mainly coal, oil and natural gas, which is meeting most of our energy requirement. And uh, uh, you would agree be, with me that uh, uh, that these fuels were being formed in millions of years and on human scale they are not renewables because uh, once they are being burnt it will take again millions of years to regenerate them. So that is not uh, uh, sustainable and secondly uh, we are talking about carbon dioxide emission level. As of now we stand at 413 ppm. Now, if I talk about uh, uh, pre-industrial era, which took place in Britain, the carbon dioxide emission level was around 200 ppm. So in last three centuries, it has almost doubled. Now, what are the effect? Effect everybody knows, it is a scientific fraternity that uh, polar caps are melting, temperature is increasing, and uh, one striking effect, uh, which I have just noted down, that January 22, was among the warmest in last 141 years and as you can see the temperature was almost 1.14 degrees centigrade higher than the 20th century average. So many things are happening simultaneously, fossil fuels are creating havoc, we don't have energy sources, people are going to solar energy, that's quite sure, but uh, particularly I'm going to talk about uh, uh, alcohols as a fuel, as an engine fuel. Now, since uh, uh, much has been said about combustion, uh, I thought uh, let me also share some of the statistics of India. India is one of the fastest uh, uh, growing economy, though in last one and a half year the economy has slowed down and still we are going ahead with around 6% GDP growth rate. And once I say 6% GDP growth rate, we require tremendous amount of energy to sustain its growth. And again, most of it is coming from fossil fuel. Government is saying that uh, we have to have an ambitious plan for implement renewable energy option in India. Unfortunately, uh, as you can see from the statistics, still it is being driven by fossil fuels. Now, uh, what people are predicting that by 2040, we are going to have 20% uh, 
rise in the global energy and that most portion of that will be contributed by India. So one thing is quite sure, we have a population of 1.3 billion as of now. Comfort level is increasing, so is uh, the per capita energy consumption in India is around 600 kilogram of oil equivalent as of now. It is also increasing. Now, when I talk about uh, 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 crude, you see, most of you would agree with me that uh, we are an energy deficient country. We are spending a huge amount on import of petroleum products. So, as you can see, I just uh, summarize that we spend almost 100 billion US dollar worth foreign exchange for import of crude petroleum in last fiscal years, 2018-19. And uh, as you can see that uh, if I talk about electricity scenario in India, Mostly it is dominated by thermal route, which is around 63% and renewable energy option is only 23%. And most importantly, government of India has already envisaged a very ambitious plan that it must have 175 gigawatt from renewables by 2022. So I keep on attending meetings, so uh, almost 100 gigawatt has been achieved out of 175, we have already accomplished 100 gigawatts. So government is striving very hard that if we can go up to 175 gigawatt in next two years. Now, caution arises, what is the need of renewable fuels in India? When I talk about renewable fuels or alternative fuels in US, the mandate is entirely different. They are talking about mandate given by EPA in USA and why that is so? Because they are just trying to reduce the climate uh, climate change effect. They are just trying to reduce the emission. But India has a diverse country. We have to deal with employment problems. We have to deal with green covers. Now, as you can see, we have 66 million hectare of barren land in India. So can we make use of that land for either energy production or for fuel production? That is a caution which is being debated by government of India for the last 17 years. Can we make use of this land? Now, government is also saying that by 2022, it has to reduce dependence on crude petroleum imported from OPEC countries. And how it is going to do that? It is going to go for energy conservation, energy efficiency, and it is also going to adopt renewable energy option by which we can reduce dependence on crude petroleum in India. Now, alcohols in petrol engine is a history. I must call at this point of time. Those who are having interest in alternative fuel must know that uh, in earlier days, people were using alcohols, especially ethanols in petrol engine. But when we talk about ethanol in diesel engine or when we talk about higher alcohols in diesel engine, it makes a sense. Why it makes a sense? Let me just uh, give you a flavor. India is highly dependent upon diesel. Now, in most of the part of world, the prices of diesel and gasoline are at par. And by and large, I have seen that uh, consumption pattern of petrol and diesel is same. But in India, it is highly skewed towards diesel. Now, we are consuming almost four to five times uh, uh, diesel as compared to gasoline. Diesel is cheaper, petrol is costlier. There is a cross subsidy put by government of India because it is being thought that diesel is being used in agriculture sector. Now, once we say that it is being used in agriculture sector for irrigation, maybe for other kind of farming application, then government always says that we must subsidize diesel. So what I'm saying that uh, I'm now going to give you a f uh, idea that how we can use higher alcohols in diesel engine because diesel engines are being considered workhorse in the economy and they are being considered backbone. That is something which I have to talk about uh, with respect to diesel engine. Now, I straight away come over to alcohols. Alcohols are nothing but they are homologous compounds and they contain OH group. And as you can see, uh, I have just depicted four pictures over here. One first is methanol, then we have ethanol, then butanol, and then octanol. 
So I can classify alcohols into two categories, broad categories, namely lower alcohols and higher alcohols. Once I say lower alcohols, it contains lower number of carbon atoms. And when I say lower number of carbon atoms, mainly I'm focusing on methanol and ethanol. Now, second category says that uh, we have higher alcohols. It contains more number of carbon atoms, namely uh, butanol and octanol. Of course, pentanol also comes into picture, but I am just focusing at present on butanol and octanol because of certain favorable properties. So, in case of butanol, we have four atoms. In case of octanol, we have eight atoms. And uh, uh, alcohols are very clean source of energy because they produce very less emission. Now, why do they produce less emission? I am going to show you a little later. Now, what is the history of alcohols as engine fuel? One thing I must add at this point of time that uh, alcohols are not being uh, used for the first time in present. They have been used for quite long. And as you can see that uh, uh, they had been the energy source right from 1800. And Henry Ford, in fact, uh, made a statement that ethanol would be the fuel of future. It was a statement made by him in 1925 and France and Germany were using ethanol in internal combustion engine around 1900. Now, Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Alva Edison also advocated use of uh, ethanol as a fuel and they pushed the, uh, uh, the dictate given by uh, Henry Ford. And uh, what is happening now those my friends from US, they may be knowing that uh, first oil embargo took place around 1972 and it was for the first time when it was felt in US and also in other countries that we must do something with respect to utilization of renewable fuels because at that point of time we were not concerned, we were, we were believing that we do have crude petroleum and we can buy crude petroleum as per our requirement. But you know that geopolitics is taking place and even now people are facing uh, uh, wars, especially in Middle East, that, that is particularly because of oil. So what I am saying that uh, the interest uh, or the recent history of alcohol's uses in uh, engine dates back to around 1972 when first oil embargo took place. Now, as I have said, ethanol application in petrol engine is very easy. You can simply blend ethanol with petrol and you can also add certain additives and you can use alcohols in petrol engine. But if you are trying to use alcohols in diesel engine, then it gives certain problems. What are those problems? I am just going to explain at that point of time. Now, you can go for alcohol. The first pathway could be that we can make a blend of alcohol or diesel. That is the first meth methodology. Second, it, that we can go for alcohol or uh, diesel emulsion. Third could be that we can go for dual injection. And fourth one that we can go for fumigation. These are the four techniques which are being used for application of alcohols in diesel engine. So I'm just going to explain them one by one. Now, alcohol blending with uh, diesel seems to be the simplest one but as I have said let me uh, share my thoughts with this August gathering that methanol and ethanol they are not being miscible with diesel so what you have to do you have to go for something else butanol and octanol they are being miscible with diesel so once I say blending of alcohols with Diesel. It is only applicable in case of butanol and octanol, not in case of uh, methanol and ethanol. So blending is very simple. You can go for splash blending. You can make a stable blend of butanol or octanol. Now, caution arises if you cannot make a blend of ethanol or methanol with diesel. What are the pathways? The pathway is very simple, we can go for emulsions. Now, most of you are familiar what emulsion is. Emulsion is that when we make use of a surfactant and we are trying to make two immiscible surfaces into a stable phase. So, that is a emulsion. So, methanol and ethanol, they can be put into emulsion form. But we need to see if emulsion is stable. Now, uh, just for your information, 
that emulsions are of two types, macro and micro emulsion. So by and large, micro emulsions are stable. Macro emulsions are not stable. And uh, what we believe in a diesel engine, that whenever we insert fuel into the combustion chamber, it, will re it should remain in the single phase. Otherwise, we will have difficulty with the combustion. Now, is this technique suitable for India? Caution arises because uh, you require surfactant. And you can, uh, uh, you can search that surfactant are quite expensive, first of all, and you require technical expertise. So that is not being suitable in Indian context because, as I have said, 70% of our population is living in rural areas. And we have 2 million engine. Now, 2 million uh, stationary engines which are used for power generation. So if you want to lease a new life to those engines, probably we cannot go for emulsion because it will be difficult for people to make emulsion at their farmhouses. Now, dual injection is another technique. What we do in dual injection, we make use of two injection system. So what we will do, we will first inject diesel. Now diesel will act as a pilot fuel and after the flame has been initiated we are going to uh, inject the uh, gas, so we, we are going to inject the uh, alcohol and that is a quite promising technique and uh, uh, in fact thermal efficiency appears to be better and NOx emissions are lower. But again it involves cost because we need to put two fuel pump and injection system. What I am trying to say at this point of time. Uh, uh, that is for those people who are working in the area of engines, there are always two techniques for adaptation of uh, alternative fuels. Either we can modify the engine or we can modify the fuel. So it's always advisable that if we can modify the fuel, if you want to keep into consideration the existing uh, uh, engine design. Now, I'm just going to share the uh, August gathering. Uh, in fact, most of you might remember that in Delhi, I belong to Delhi and I have seen myself. In Delhi, Honorable Supreme Court mandated that uh, all diesel vehicle plying must be converted to CNG. And what happened overnight? All engines were being converted into CNG in a span of around one year and one and a half year. Now what happened? There were huge queues at the CNG stations because there were very few of them. Even now, the CNG uh, paraphilia has stabilized, but even then you will find long queues. So what I am saying that uh, uh, for existing design of engine, it is always better to go for fuel modification rather than going for engine modification. So uh, dual injection is one of the techniques wherein we can make use of two fuel pump and injection system. Now last is fumigation that uh, we can have a vaporizer or a carburetor which could be installed at the intake manifold of the engine and what we can do we can pass on the alcohol through the carburetor or through the vaporizer and the main fuel will be coming into the engine from uh, a main fuel injection system that is diesel and a major chunk of fuel will be supplied in vaporized form that is alcohol through the intake manifold. That technique is also better because we can substitute up to 50 percent and uh, there is a power gain, there is a, uh, there, there is a uh, decrease in uh, 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 emissions but again I will not advocate this particular methodology because this will also involve involvement of cost. We need to put a carburetor or we need to put a vaporizer into the intake manifold. Now, what are the limitation of lower alcohols? So, as I have said, the limitation of lower alcohols, ethanol or methanol, they have got very low cetane number. Ethanol and methanol, they have got very low cetane number. And for the scientific fraternity, everybody knows the importance of uh, uh, cetane number in diesel combustion. Higher is the cetane number, better is the combustion. So the ethanol or the methanol, they are being considered good SIE engine fuel, not good CI engine fuel primarily because of lower cetane number. And secondly, uh, their heating capacity is also lower as compared to diesel. Also, <coughs> lower alcohols require additives for making a emulsion because they are not being miscible with diesel. Now, one very bad thing about lower alcohols that their affinity to water is pretty high. 
and since their water affinity is pretty high they always uh, absorb moisture and since they absorb moisture we always have chances of rusting so what you might have seen that uh, in case of ethanol application in engines we are putting certain rust inhibitors so that rusting is not there in the engines now this is again one of the drawback and uh, uh, alcohols do not have good lubricating property Nowadays, we are talking about CRDI engine wherein we are using almost 1500 bar injection pressure and the fuel is lubricating the fuel injection system. So if you don't have lubricating property in the fuel, of course we will have more wear and tear with respect to engine when we are going to use ethanol or lower alcohols. Now what are the advantages of higher alcohols? In fact, the best thing which you can see it is good miscibility. There is very good miscibility with diesel, both butanol as well as octanol. So you need not to go for uh, uh, making emulsions or you, not, you not, need not to go for other techniques. Simply blend them. They are miscible. And uh, uh, we don't require any modification in engine design. And uh, energy content and CTA number of our alcohols is pretty much comparable to diesel which are which lower alcohols in lower alcohols it was lower however in case of higher alcohols it is very much comparable to diesel now uh, in fact performance emission and combustion characteristics are better in certain respect because uh, i will just show you uh, uh, the <coughs> table why the, now in euro 6 norms everybody is familiar in India, we are going to have Euro 6 norm from 1st April 2020. And once I say uh, 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 Euro 6 norm, BS 6 norms, we are going to reduce the NOx emissions. Now, how we can reduce NOx emission? Alcohols is a key wherein uh, we can make use of alcohols to reduce the NOx emission. And how we can do that, let, let me just show you. The latent heat of evaporation is higher in case of alcohols. If latent heat of evaporation is higher, they will take heat from combustion chamber and if temperature is being lower of combustion because of high heat of uh, vaporization, the NOx formation would be lower because NOx is a temperature dependent phenomenon. So that is how we can reduce NOx and as you can also see that uh, uh, CTA number, especially of octanol is very much comparable to diesel fuel. As of now, people are working on two kinds of higher alcohols, namely butanol and octanols. We are also using both butanol as well as octanol. But in my personal opinion, octanol seems to be better, though it has a disadvantage that uh, its viscosity is pretty higher. So what I am saying that higher alcohols are coming up People are working in their laboratory on use of higher alcohols as a alternative fuels. And uh, uh, let me show you the potential of higher alcohols. What is the potential of higher alcohols in India and uh, uh, worldwide? Now, as you can see that uh, the butanol production is limited. Very uh, small production, especially only 12,000 gallons uh, in 2013 none in 14 and 15 and 125,000 in 2016. So butanol production is pretty low as compared to other alternative fuel market. Uh, if you can compare it with methanol or ethanol, it is pretty low, very much low. Now, when what we are expecting that uh, by 2020, the market will be worth 5.6 billion US dollar. It is a contemplation and uh, what people are saying that Asia Pacific will have the largest share of butanol market. Now when we talk about octanol, octanol is mainly found in South Asia, EU and USA and output of these regions is around 80% of global octanol production. Now global market size of octanol will reach around 290 million by 2024 as against 220 million in 2019 and British Petroleum is undertaking use of uh, butanol and it is trying to import butanol. Now let me just uh, also uh, uh, show you one picture. B what is the production mechanism of butanol? Butanol is being made through a process of ABE 
and it is a fermentation. So at present all I can say that butanol is coming from renewable sources because it is being made from fermentation. Whereas octanol is coming from ethylene, that is a fossil source. So butanol is sustainable as far as renewable fuel is concerned, octanol is not. People are just trying to make use of production mechanism of octanol from renewable source, which seems to be difficult at this point of time. So what I am saying, most of the butanol is coming from ABE's, ABE's process and uh, I'm just going to finish uh, 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 before I show you butanol in India, how butanol is doing in India because I need to show you how we are doing in India. Now, butanol, demand for butanol is around 60 kiloton per annum in 2018 and uh, it will go up with a healthy CAGR, it is expected. Butanol is only used in chemical industry as of now. There is no fuel application, whatever butanol is being used as a fuel that is being done in the laboratory only. People are working on butanol as an alternative fuel in diesel engine as well as in petrol engine. Now, Andhra Petrochemical has an annual capacity of 60 kiloton per annum capacity of production of butanol. BPCL is also entering into biobutanol production, that is a uh, uh, big step by BPCL. And, uh, BPCL uh, is saying that uh, they will complete their plant by 2020, which would have a capacity of 150 kiloton per annum. Now, let me just finish by saying that uh, higher, car, higher alcohols are better than lower alcohols, especially in diesel engines, because I am focusing on diesel engines and uh, uh, no engine modification is required. That is the beauty of higher alcohols. Now, complete blending and no phase separation is observed during the initial investigation. Now, better emission characteristics is being achieved. Now, one more thing I would like to tell my friends from India as well as overseas, that we have a biofuel policy 2018 and which has mandated use of 20% ethanol in petrol engine. It is silent on use of ethanol in diesel engine. It only stresses biodiesel blending, 5% biodiesel blending in diesel or 20% blending of ethanol in petrol engine. So let us see how things will evolve in uh, coming time. And one more thing I will finish by saying that uh, higher alcohols, uh, uh, they are still in the research phase in India. And let us see when they can come become commercially competitive or commercially viable in India. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And if there is any question, I will be very happy to reply. Any questions? Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, okay. Hello, thank you, sir. I'm Dr. Paramvir Singh from IIT Bombay. So I have a query. I have seen a lot of paper on alcohol blending diesel fuels especially by Professor Nadir Yilmaz from Washington University. So the blending of higher alcohols like 15% or 20%, the cooling effect of alcohols, especially the lower carbon alcohols like methanol and, and ethanol affects the combustion of the fuel. Is this uh, happen with the higher chains also like butanol and actinol? It also happens with because you see latent heat of operation is higher in both the cases. It is much higher in case of lower alcohols as compared to higher alcohols, but quenching effect takes place and quenching effect many times uh, affect the combustion. So uh, benefit is that NOx emissions are reduced. Yeah. The detrimental effect is that combustion is affected. So we have to make a balance that up to which percentage we are getting better options. Yeah, actually, sir, it's not possible only with the use of 5 or 10 percent to decrease the dependency on fossil fuel. We have to move towards like the higher blending of alcohol. Is this possible with any type of like with dual or fumigation? Now, Do you suggest uh, uh, I can talk with, uh, talk with respect to India. You see, we are consuming around 100 million tons of diesel every year and around 30 million tons of gasoline. Yeah, yeah. So put together 130 millions. Yeah. So even if you substitute 5% and 10%, it makes a big sense. Because yeah. you see, uh, what happened with biodiesel mission? Government was contemplating to 
or substitute 20 yeah. percent but it could not do that so what i'm saying at this point of time that we must be a bit realistic mm -hmm. we must start with lower target maybe two percent or five percent and once we have a uh, matured technology we can go up, uh, up to five percent uh, up to ten percent or twenty yeah. percent that will be better Thank you. Uh, great talk. Uh, uh, I want to know about uh, the comparison between butanol and uh, fatty acid methyl-based biodiesel. So, no. uh, what is more advantageous, both from the combustion perspective and the, like the production cost perspective? So, why should we choose, say, butanol compared to fame biodiesel or the other way around? So. Now, biodiesel undoubtedly they are a good option for biodiesel because uh, they have a certain number primarily equal to that of diesel. The higher alcohols has got uh, lower uh, certain number. So, if you talk about combustion properties, combustion will definitely be better in case of biodiesel vis a vis higher alcohols. So, that is first part of your question. And secondly, as I have just answered to Dr. Paramji Singh, we need to see the availability. Mm. So, you see, not a single source of alternative fuel can ever substitute petroleum D1 in near future. So we have to have a mix. We can take 5% of higher alcohols, we can take 5% of biodiesel, then only we can substitute fossil fuel. Otherwise, it will not be possible. So you are thinking of a ternary mix. So like biodiesel, We are even going to quaternary blends. You see, we started with binary, then we switched over to ternary. Now, as of now, we are working on quaternary blends. Thank you. Any other question? No? In that case, let's uh, give appreciation to you.